Well, hi guys. Welcome back to my channel. Today is part two of dashboard uh, removal. Um, it's also the 1st of January 2020, so a happy new year to everyone. Um, before I start, there's a couple of things I want to go through with you. Um, first of all, whenever doing any work on your car, always disconnect the battery first. There's nothing worse than messing around with electrics and suddenly something gets shorted out and your car burns up. So in all of my videos, I will try to remind you, always disconnect your battery first. The next thing is, for this demonstration, I've removed the seats, or the front seats anyway. You don't need to do them for dashboard removal. I've purely removed them for access for recording the video and for the person doing the videoing to get access to uh, those little tight spots. So that's first of all. Secondly, the car that I'm using is my demonstration car. It was one I bought a couple of years ago. It's just sat around. And as I go through it, I notice that there's already been 100,000 people been inside this car, taking it apart, hacking apart the wiring. Just about everything in it is not as it should be. Now I've had a quick look through it today and tried to get it as close to factory as I can for this demonstration. If I spot anything while we're taking it apart that isn't as it should be, I'll point it out to you so when you're taking yours apart, you'll know that yours is correct and this one is wrong. Um, the next thing is, this is a DIY demonstration video. This is for the man at home who wants to try the job himself. If you're a professional, you're gonna have your own method of taking these things apart. But I wanted to make the video as simple as possible for the man at home to do. And this is a DIY job if you follow the instructions carefully. Now, it does look a bit scary. You're gonna be taking out a major part of your car um, and you're gonna be taking out lots of nuts and bolts. And when you take that dashboard out, you're gonna straight away put your hands to your face and go, what the hell have I done here? But don't be afraid of it. At the end of the day, it comes apart using nuts and bolts and you'll put it back together using the same nuts and bolts. Now, the reason I've decided to do this video um, is because lots of people, myself included, have been having the heat events uh, along the dashboard break up over the years. Um, and I've had a lot of uh, messages, especially from Australia, where they get endless sunshine where their dashboard is all warped as well and the new vents don't fit into the dashboard. So we're going to be uh, in this part taking the dashboard out and in part three I'm going to show you how to repair those warped dashboards so your new vents go back in and look like new again. Um, so that's the reason we're doing it. Now for those of you that are not too familiar with where everything goes in these cars, if you've never taken one apart before, you're gonna need to get yourself a piece of cardboard and draw yourself your interpretation of the dashboard layout. Now, the reason you're gonna do this is because we're gonna be taking out approximately 50 bolts and screws, and it's not always possible to remember where all of them go. So what you're gonna do, every time you take out a screw, you're gonna make a little hole where that screw came from, and you're gonna poke the screw into the hole. That way you'll know exactly where they came from when it comes to putting the whole thing back together again. So if you get yourself a piece of cardboard, something to make a hole, draw yourself a picture how you interpret it and you shouldn't have any problems. And finally, we're gonna have a little look at the tools you're gonna to need. These are all DIY tools. If you pop along to your local Walmart, you're gonna be able to buy these tools. They're nothing special. So you're gonna be needing a small selection of Phillips screwdrivers. You would definitely be needing a stubby one. So make sure you've got one of those as well. Do not try to do the job with the larger ones. The larger ones are for those hard to get at places. You're also gonna need some trim tools and pick tools. Um, whatever you choose to use is up to you. Some people might wanna try prying it with a screwdriver or whatever. I'm trying to keep it semi-professional by using the right tools. Then you're going to need a quarter inch drive with a 10 mil socket on the top. This is for getting your nuts and bolts out. And finally, a 3 8 drive with a 12 millimeter socket piece on the end. So that covers pretty much all the tools you're likely to need. Now, during this video, I'm going to be swapping from side to side and the video is going to keep being cut. 
it's purely because the bolts are spread out over such a wide area I don't want to use up huge bits of video footage purely me moving around within the car so don't be worried about the cuts in the video there's nothing being hidden from you what you're going to see is exactly what you need to do to strip this dashboard down and get it out successfully without any damage uh, you're probably also going to notice the method that I use to get the dashboard out is slightly different from what it shows in the manual. It's purely that I've taken lots of these out and I've tried to find the fastest possible way of doing it with minimal amount of strip down. So don't worry too much about that. If you prefer to use the manual's way, then please do use a manual's way or a combination of both. But once you've watched the video, you make up your own mind how is best uh, working for you. So I think that about covers all the beginning part of it. Now let's start with a strip down. Okay, so now we come to taking apart the dashboard. And before you start this, I do want to explain to you that these cars are now getting very old and some of the plastic parts are getting very, very brittle. So please be aware that during taking it apart, there is a small chance that you could do damage, especially if you try to force something that shouldn't be forced treat everything very very gently. Now the dashboard itself comprises of three main sections. You've got the upper dashboard which holds the clocks. You've got the glove box and you have this section under the steering wheel. So those three parts will come apart separately. I'm going to start with the part under the steering wheel but you don't necessarily have to start on this side if you don't want to. Now for this section to come off we have to take out two sets of switches and four bolts. And to remove the switches, you're gonna need a, a gentle plastic tool. Try not to be too harsh with, uh, you know, using a screwdriver or anything like that. Now these switches over the years have been out so many times by previous owners. So the chances are these are gonna be broken already. But to get them out, you just get your trim tool in under the switch edge and just gently prise it. And you'll feel the clips come undone and then you pull it forward. Once it's out, uh, same as the switches yesterday that we dealt with, you just press the little tag on one side and pull the cable out. Leave your cables there. On the other side of the steering wheel, uh, I think we'll cut and come round to the other side. Two, one, go. And then on this side you've got another switch. Once again, you can see this one's already been broken, but it makes no difference. And you just pop that out the same as on the other side. Disconnect your wires. And that's that one. You put the two switches to one side and you're ready to move on. Now, hopefully the camera can see in here. Right down in the hole there, we've got a bolt. And there's the same size bolt on the other side where we, we removed the other switch. Also, there's two bolts underneath the dashboard. Now, I don't know if the camera is able to get to these. There is one just here. And there's one on the other side in a similar place. Now, you're gonna need to undo all four of those bolts, but just before you do, we're gonna remove the bonnet release catch. Now, for those of you in the States, you'll know it as the hood. Um, so the release catch for the hood, which is down here, you need to pull that forward as though you're releasing the hood or bonnet. And I'm directly uh, behind it, I don't know if you're able to see, catch. there's that two just screws it easier for us to take this piece in. off once the uh, dashboard now, Just to give you a better visualisation, so I have this section of dashboard out toilet. here. This is where your hood release catch is and directly behind you'll see two screws. So you're going to need to undo those first with a regular Phillips screwdriver. Now this is one of those things that helps if you can work blind. Otherwise you're going to have to get on your back to do it. one and there's two 
Now if you now pull this forward just a little bit and turn it over, you can see where the cable goes into the catch. We're going to need to disconnect that now. And to do so, sometimes this metal tag's already been undone, in which case it's not a problem. If it's still a bit tight, you just bend that lug slightly outwards and then this cable will work out of that slot, like so. Then you turn the catch and bring it out of there. And then you put that to one side. Now we go back to the four bolts that I talked about earlier. Two underneath, two inside the switch holes. These are regular 10 mil uh, socket pieces. Um, that's easiest to get to them with some sort of extension bar. So start with the bottom ones. Again, it helps if you can work blind. One. There's two. Now at this point, this is where you're going to bring in the piece of cardboard that you through a representation of the dashboard on. So you visualize your dashboard however you want. And from this point, you're going to keep a note of where all of your screws came from, purely by making little holes and putting the screw in the hole. So we've got two there. I need to do another little drawing in a moment. There's one there. Now by doing this of course you're always going to know exactly where all those bolts come from. Not unless you're a lucky person who can remember these things. Now it is important that you put the right ones in the right places. Because if you think any old bolt is uh, the same, even if it's uh, a different length, you might be mistaken because some of these are a specific length for a reason. And that's because the thickness of the dashboard in different places requires longer or shorter bolts. Now I'm going to make two more holes ready for the next two bolts that I'm pulling out. Put that to one side a second. So I'm just going to do the one on this side first. one and then the one on this side Oop, missed it that's two I'll just put these in the cardboard here Now that section's completed. So from here, we just pull the dashboard forward slightly and it's free, ready for you to move on to the next part. So I'll put that to one side. Now at this point, I'm going to swap to the other side. I don't need to do that, but I find that if you've got a very large task, by swapping back and forth to different areas, it breaks it down into smaller little jobs and therefore the whole big job seems much smaller and you're less likely to forget 
what you're doing because if you start at one end by the time you've done a hundred screws you've forgotten what you've done at the other end so we'll just break it down into small sections okay so now I've moved to the other side of the car I want to point out at this point that whether you're left or right hand drive cars the process is exactly the same it's just the mirror image now on this side we need to remove the glove box this will come out in one big section but we need to dismantle it as two separate sections. Before I start, I've put a large bundle of cloth down here because we're going to release a couple of catches that will allow this door to drop. And what I don't want it to do is uh, risk it dropping too far and snapping off the plastic clips behind. Now, this is not my favorite part of the job. We've got a couple of uh, clips here, one on this side, one on this side. Now these clips are a bit weird, they're very awkward to get out and I'm going to try to demonstrate it the best I can in such a confined space. Now first of all to release them you're going to need some sort of trim tool. Now if you haven't got one of these tools, a regular kitchen knife will suffice without a sharp edge to it. Um, if it has got a sharp edge just watch your fingers and watch you don't scratch your plastic. Now what we're going to have to do is get the tool in behind one of the clips. Maybe I'll try this side first so you can film it better. So now we've got the clip behind the trim, uh, the little clip there. You've now got to do a bit of a juggling act. You've got to lift the door slightly, but still have enough space to get your hand into the glove box. And you've got to reach to the back of the clip and pull it forward as you lift the door. Now, once you do this, you'll feel it click forward. Once it comes forward, you then move the trim tool round to the back and pull the back of the clip forward. And then as you bring the door back down, that clip will pull out. So as I say, it's a motion forward first, then the back out, then the rest out. And now I'll try to do the same to the other side. So once again, we slip a tool in the front, we lift the door up and bring the clip forward. Once it goes forward, you move the tool to the back, bring the back out. And now as you bring the drawer forward, this will release. Now remember to catch your door as it comes down, just make sure it doesn't drop too far because behind here you can see we've got two plastic clips that are easily broken if you force it too far. So now you need your long um, bodied screwdriver and you're going to undo those two screws that retain that in. Now you don't have to actually take this off, but the reason I take it off is purely to avoid any damage to it. You will definitely have to lower it down though. And we take that out the way. So I've just put the screws into our sheet of cardboard so I know where they go when we go to put it back together. The next part is to remove the rest of the glove box compartment. For this, you've got four Phillips screws which we'll start with undoing. Now all four of these screws are the same, so you can't get these ones mixed up. Take a note of which way round the catch goes. And then we have four 10 millimeter bolts. Start with the bottom two, one here, now these four have uh, two different types so these ones you do have to remember which one went where, one on this side
and then two at the top. You notice these uh, top ones are a bit longer. And then we pull this plastic compartment out. Now don't pull it out too roughly because there are cables attached behind it. So pull it forward and here you see your glove box light. Just turn it anti-clockwise, the light will come out. And that's that part of the process done. At this point, I'm just going to uh, put all my screws into the cardboard so we know where they go. And then we'll move on to the next section. So now we're going to move on to the center console of the car. Now, we don't have to remove the entire center console, but to aid access to certain screws, we're going to take out these two carpeted side panels. Now to do this is quite a simple process depending on how old your car is and what condition it's in. First of all we're going to undo a screw here. Now if your car has been looked after that screw will have a cover over the top of it and to undo that cover you simply need some sort of pick tool and find out the location of the hinge and then pry it on the opposite side of the hinge. This is an old car and like I said it had been apart by a hundred people before me. They've broken the top off the cover so this one doesn't have it. And then behind there is a simple screw. So we'll remove that screw. Then at the very back here you'll be able to see yourself but you may not be able to pick it up on the video. There is a little press, um, I don't even know what to describe it, a little press screw, um, but I've got one out for you to see. Just like that. Now in order to get that out, you simply tuck your fingers behind the plastic trim and just pull outwards. And then you'll see that comes out. Now for the next section, ordinarily that would now remain in. There's a couple of clips here. The correct way to get those clips out is to put a trim tool up the back and just pry them out. Sometimes, especially if your seat's still in, this can be really difficult. But what you can do is put your fingers up behind and bend it in the middle and you'll find it will come out of the two clips. We've got one here and one here. Now again you can see that someone's had this apart before and those clips have been broken um, and that's another reason why I don't like to use a trim tool. Sometimes these are now getting so old and brittle that they just break when you take them out. It's fine if you've got easy access to replacements but if not you can uh, now get behind them to release them properly. So that's that off on that side. Now we'll move to the other side and do the same on the other side. So on this side, it's more or less a mirror image of the other side. You locate your screw here and undo the screw, remembering it may have a cap on it that you have to release first. Take that screw out, pull the stud from behind the back. And again, the clips have all gone on this side. Ah, but this shows you what type of clip it is. Now on this particular one, if your clip's still in place, this is a, a two-way uh, movement, or a single-way movement, I should say. Just slide it back and then it will come off the clip, as so. But on the other side, the clips go in opposite directions, so it's not possible to slide it back and release it in this method. I'll leave that in there for now. Another thing I'm going to do is the screw that I took out from here, although we have a piece of cardboard to put all these screws in, for this particular one, I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, so while we're down in the center console area, I want to show you something, and this is actually quite rare because I've done quite a few of these, and I've never seen this clip still in place because everybody misses the bolt behind the back here. 
and instead they just yank the dashboard out and break the section of uh, dashboard off. So with your 10mm ratchet you're now going to undo that bolt there. And also while we're in this position, we're going to undo this one screw here. And now I'll put those screws into our cardboard so we know where they are. Okay. Okay, so now we come around to the other side of the car and then we take this screw out as well. That now releases your centre console from the main dashboard. And while we're around this side, we'll just undo these three screws here. One, two, three is under there. And you'll find this easier with a very small stubby screwdriver. This will allow the plastic section underneath just to lower down to give better access for removing the dashboard. Okay, so now we've uh, removed the glove box and we've moved back to the other side of the car for what is probably the most scary part. Now I've watched a few videos online of other people trying to get these out and they seem to have made the job much, much bigger and much scarier than it needs to be. For instance, a lot of people are removing the airbags, steering wheel, clock spring, a whole bunch of wiring, the surrounds around the steering column and a whole bunch of other stuff. I have a way of doing it that I think is the best and easiest way and can save an awful lot of work, especially if you're not a specialist and you're not able to reset all the clock spring and etc. So just before I tell you about that, I just want to point out something. Um, I had a message from someone called Mike last night asking about the e-tax and I said during this video I would show him where that's located. So if you come across here and across down by the side of the steering wheel and under the dashboard you will see this box just here. Now that's your e-tax unit and that controls things like your wing mirrors, alarm, door locks, interior lights and a couple of other things and it's basically um, almost a timing box that then sends commands to control boxes for other units in the car to make everything work. Now these are becoming a bit of a problem now, we're starting to get a few fail um, doing all sorts of weird things, so you might well need to know the location of that. It's also worth noting there's more than one version, they're both located in the same place but one is a metal box and the other one is a plastic box on a metal frame. So that's well worth noting. Um, I also need to let you know that in a future video we're going to do a full car strip down and show the location of all of the boxes in the car and a full description of what they do and known faults. But that's something for the future. So for now we need to remove the steering wheel assembly so we can get to the clocks and the bolts behind and also aid bringing the uh, dashboard forward. Now, as I say, I don't like to strip all of this down. I don't feel there's a need for it. So the way I do it is first of all, start off with a Phillips screwdriver and you're going to locate this piece of heating ducting down here. Now this is held in with two screws. I know you can see three, but you only need to undo two. This one here and this one here. So let's start by undoing those. Now once you've taken those two screws out, the ducting will move and come disconnected enough for that to just lower down. One of these sections is on a hinge with another piece of ducting, so you don't need to remove that completely. 
The next thing you need to locate is two screws at the top of the steering rack here. Well, actually, they're two bolts. Now, it's very difficult to film those. So what I've got here is a spare steering rack. Now, this is the location you're looking for. There'll be two bolts, one going up this side, one going up this side near to the ignition cable. And by removing those two bolts, this is hinged and we can lower the whole steering rack all in one go without having to dismantle it. So I'm going to try to do that now. You may not be able to see it in the video, but just so you know what I'm doing, it's purely the two bolts at the top of the steering rack. For this job, you're going to need a 12 mil socket and get right up in there. And I just realised I called it a steering rack. I meant to say steering column. That's one. Now this is quite a heavy unit. So when you come to undo the second bolt, try to support the unit in some way rather than it pulling on the bolt and tearing the thread. Gotta watch I don't knock my teeth out here. So now we can very slowly lower the steering column and I'd recommend that you put something underneath it just to take the weight of it. And there you go. For those of you that have seen the other videos where all of this gets stripped down, I think you'll agree that's a much easier process. Okay, so with the steering out of the way, we can now move on to the easy access of the clocks, which we didn't have before. To remove the clocks, we've first of all got to remove this plastic surround. And to do that, you're going to need a stubby Phillips screwdriver and locate the two screws that should be in there. But it feels like someone's already had these out and not put them back in. So that will make life a bit easier for us. Once that's done, you need your plastic trim tool And now just leave it a top forward and the sides and that's out. As before, you've got your cables, press in the tag, hold your switch so it doesn't get broken and unplug it. And the same on this side. Nice and easy. Now the clocks themselves need to come out. Now I've just had a quick look and it looks like someone's already had these out previously as well. However, I will still be able to show you what we need to undo. So to remove the clock unit, there's four screws. Standard Phillips screws. We have one here, one in here, one down here, and one up here. So it's the only four screws you can actually see in that area. So I'll start taking those out now. And now to release the clocks, you simply get a good grip on the display and pull it forward. These are just plugged in. And you'll see, easy as that. Now this is a good opportunity while you've got these out to check all of your bulbs. So as you can see, there's an awful lot of bulbs in there. And those of you that are getting a really dim display now, you can check all of your bulbs at this time. And we'll put that to one side. 
Now you've got easy access to the bolts behind. You're going to need to undo this bolt and this bolt. These two are the last remaining in this area that holds the dashboard to the main body. Standard 10mm socket. Once again an extension bar will help you to get in there properly. And that's that bit done. So as you can see we're nearly at the end of the job now and I think you'll agree it's not as bad a job as you might think. Um, now we're going to move on to the final couple of bits that are needed to remove the dashboard. Um, I'm going to cut at this point, just get the next tools ready and then we'll come back to it. Okay so now I've come back around to the other side of the car for the final couple of uh, bolts and screws left in order to remove this dashboard. Now I've not actually done one of these for a while and this video hasn't been rehearsed so I'm purely going by memory. At this point we're going to access uh, a bolt that a lot of people don't know about. In order to do that you'll need some sort of pick or trim tool and we're going to remove which on this car is a speaker on some cars it's just a plastic cover. You just need to get your trim tool underneath and just gently lever it up all the way around and you'll find the clips come free like that. Don't pull on it because you risk breaking the cables or what the cables are plugged into and if you turn it over you'll see that they've uh, put tape around these possibly to stop vibration working them loose but there's just enough access to get a tool underneath this clip here and once you release the clip if you've got more hands you should be able to unplug your speaker like so. Before going back to the other side for the other speaker there's one other bolt that remains on this side which is straight under the dashboard just here. It's a standard 10 millimeter bolt again so grab your socket piece And finally, on this side, if you look down into that hole there, you'll see right at the very back, there is one more bolt to be got at. And you're definitely going to need a long extension for this. So reach down into the hole there, go onto that bolt. Remember when you're bringing your socket piece up not to hit the glass, because you stand a chance of breaking your glass. So just put your hand in the way every time you're going an upward motion. And now I'll go round to the other side and do the other speaker. Okay, so now back round to the other side and we'll remove the other speaker. Same as uh, the first one you did, just a pick or trim tool and gently work it out. Now these are getting very fragile now, so you need to be very gentle with how you work it out. And I've already noticed this one has got a piece of plastic broken. So we'll be extra careful. You've also got to watch that you don't break the printed circuit board or wires. Lift up the clip. And then pop it clear. So now we've removed the speaker and the bolt behind the speaker. You can see that our dashboard is now free and ready to come out. However, we're not going to bring it out at this point because the centre console is still restricting its movement and by trying to force it you risk breaking bits of plastic. So what we're going to do to be safe is to shift the centre console back to give us better access. This is a fairly simple and quick job. So first of all, um, you know yourself there should be a, a lid on here. The lid has been broken off. This is just a demonstration car. We start off by removing the uh, tray and then you need a small pick tool or trim tool to get behind here and you'll just lift that off there. Oops. Then you need your Phillips screwdriver. Two screws here. One 
and two. I believe these would have ordinarily been black, but someone's uh, had them out and put in the wrong ones at some point. I should say this car is going to end up being fully stripped in order to do all the demonstration videos. When the demonstrations are finished, the whole car will be put back together exactly as it would have been at the factory with all replacement parts and all the correct nuts, bolts, screws, cables, wiring loom, everything exactly as it should be. So that's our four screws out. We can now lift this box away to give us better access. Whoops! <laughs> so I can see right from the start we've got our SRS box missing from here. Yet another example of where someone's hacked at this car to do whatever it is they want to do. Um, but I will put in a new SRS box before we put this back together. The next part of the process is to remove the gear knob, simple unscrew knob, and this gator here. I'll just move those matches before they all fall in there. And now we remove this gator, simple pull up piece of leather. And I've spotted more screws and stuff in there that should not be in there from where it's been taken apart. Okay, so the next part of the process, we've got one screw here and one screw here that need to be undone. So simple Phillips screwdriver. Now I should mention this one here is usually done up so tight you nearly always end up rounding off the screw when you try to take it out. If you round off the screw, I find a pair of mole grips is perfect just to grip hold of that head, just to break it free, and then you can get at the screw. Uh, just for reference, this is one of your fuel pump relays, should you need to locate it. So now I'm going to do one more thing here. This cable's still a bit tight. I see some people have cut the cable ties already. But just to give us slightly better access, we're going to release the wiring loom at this point. And we'll unplug the fuel pump relay. Hopefully that will give us a little bit more movement. Wow. Okay, so there's one other thing that will help us. I'm always trying to look for the easiest way of doing these projects. And I think that... Uh, we shouldn't need to move this metal. We only need to come back about two inches just to release the dashboard. So on the other side, if the camera is able to get round here, we've got this last piece of carpet remaining. There is a clip on one end. Sometimes you can just pull the clip out and take the carpet out the back. Otherwise, you'll need to slide it out the front. I prefer to bring it out the back wherever possible by just releasing the clip. There we go, up the top, maybe works out best. So same as on the other side, we've got two screws, one here. And one under here, which I don't think you can get the camera to, but it's exactly the same place as the other side.
so that's the other one. Now we can see how much movement we've got. And I think that should just about be enough for us to now release the dashboard. Okay, so there's one final thing we've now got to do. With everything free, all that remains is the cables and uh, plugs. So we're going to go through systematically unplugging anything we can unplug while the dashboard is still in situation. The reason for that is this is a fairly heavy unit and if you bring the dashboard out first you've got to support it while you then undo all the plugs. So we'll undo as many as possible before removal of the dashboard. So now we start with releasing as many cables as we can while it's still in place. I'm going from memory here so this might be a bit of a slow process. We're going to start off with this plug down here. As before you press in the tag, pull out the cable. And then there's another one here, press in the tag and pull out the cable. Now those two that we just unplugged will actually be staying here. What we now need to do is release the uh, sockets from the metal work. To do that without breaking them, you'll get a pair of uh, sharp nose pliers or you can use a screwdriver and you're going to go round the back and just pinch in the tags in order to uh, pull those plugs out. So if I can squeeze in here... Okay, so you can see the tags here and all you need to do is push them in using your long nose pliers or screwdriver and just wriggle it and then that'll come through the hole. Then we locate the bottom one. Uh, in that little tiny gap, squeeze them in. And pull it out. So that's those released. Then we come over to here. Now we have a couple of large cables and plugs here. Right up under the dashboard very difficult to get to so this is going to require a little bit of patience and I'm not going to be able to film in here at the same time but I'm going to try to point at the plugs you need so it's these here you've got one two and then one just behind there three you need to undo those three so if I can get in there It's the same method as all the other plugs. Press in the tag and then pull out the plug. Like so. Now you need someone with really tiny hands to get in there. I do apologise, I'm going to have to cut the video here in order to get into that tiny little space. Right, okay. We're going to go back to the video. Oh, okay. Right. I just mute out the audio from this but it just shows you struggling with some plugs. <laughs> so with the large one the tag is at the bottom. With the top two the tag is at the top. Press it down and pull it out. With the back one it's a slightly different tag but still the same principle. Just press it in hard with your hands and unplug it. So that's those three out the way. Now we're going to go to the uh, other side of the dashboard. So on this side, you've got a vent here. And behind the vent is a plug. You're going to need to release that plug. Now as with so many of these, it's doing it almost completely blind. And not very easy. Okay, so that's that one out. Now that pretty much covers all of the cables we can unplug at this stage. For the next stage, you're going to need some help. 
It is possible to do it as one person, but believe me, it's not something you want to struggle with. So I'll cut the video and get myself some help at this point. Two, one. Okay, so I've got some help now, and we're going to try for the next stage of dashboard removal. Now at this point, you should not just yank the dashboard out because there may well still be some cables either still plugged in or caught around the back. So we're going to very gently move the dashboard forwards and then slowly work it out. So with one person on each side, we'll start bringing it forward. And at this point, I can feel some cables already that are stuck behind. Now things aren't helped because someone's already been behind here a few times and they've added untold amounts of wiring. Some of this wiring is nothing but a nightmare. So if you give me a moment to see what on earth I've done here and then we'll go from there. Okay, so if you look behind here and you pull the dashboard right forward, you'll see we've still got three plugs still attached. Now, due to the location of those plugs, they're quite difficult to detach and film at the same time. So I'll do my best. One. One two. And three. So that's so it's done. Now we'll try and move the dashboard forward a little more. And that's it, we're clear. Now you can take the dashboard out of either side, but because I've got limited space on my side, I'm going to pass it through to my assistant here. And that completes your dashboard removal. Okay, so now the dashboard's out and we've got it to a, a better working area, you can see the main reason for people taking these things out. Over the years, the uh, heat and cold has caused the dashboard demist vents to warp um, and crack and eventually break up completely. Now, at this point, you can simply try to fit in your new vents. The problem is, not only has the heat and cold warped the vents themselves and caused them to break, but it's also warped the dashboard. So you'll find when you go to put in your brand new vents, you end up with large gaps on one side, ends that don't meet properly. Um, same on this one, it's actually dropping straight in there if we're to bolt it to the original position. So what I'm gonna do in part three to this three part video set is show you how to correct all the defects with your dashboard so that your new vents fit perfectly and your dashboard will be returned to its original new condition. So I look forward to uh, seeing you in part three. Thanks for watching part two. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as part one. Um, as usual, I do accept requests for any future videos. And at the end of this video, you'll see a list of upcoming videos for the future. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon.